All right, this is what I use to make sourdough loaf. A, uh, that's my dog. I have my starter right here. This is what I keep it in. And it's been a week since I fed it, so it's hungry. You can see by the little film at the top. I also have hot water. I always do um, warmed water, just if from the tap, just warm it up um, and then make sure it is a little bit warm before you use it. Then I have a big bowl. This is where I'm gonna mix all of my dough in and then I'm gonna keep that and let that sit. This is for my water. So I put my water and starter together before I put it in the flour. Um, and then this is my bread flour. I make bread every week. So I have a big thing of uh, bread flour. I also have some wheat bread flour. Um, I'm gonna show you how to use just a little bit of it just to give it some a, a little bit of a wheat dough um, rather than just white bread flour. Um, but you know, if you don't want to use wheat flour, I'll also explain how not to use that. I also have salt and a little teaspoon because you're gonna want um, a few, uh, just a, two teaspoons of salt in your dough. So let me start. So first, this is very important. This is my scale. Um, and what I do is I change the mode and make sure it's in grams because it's just a way more accurate measure than using cups. So it's set to zero grams. I'm gonna put my empty bowl and then I'm gonna zero it out, zero. Now I'm gonna add a total of 520 grams of flour. If you're just using white bread flour, you can just do um, the, you know, 520 grams of entirely bread flour, white bread flour, but I'm going to do 100 grams of wheat flour in addition to the 420 grams of white. So you can kind of play with your ratios as you get more used to this, but um, that's how it works. All right, here we go. I'm adding in 100 grams. I just want to get it to 520. And my dog is crying for attention. Um, but Finn, I will get to you in one minute. Okay, so like most bread baking, um, what you're gonna do is you're gonna mix around your dry ingredients before you mix together your white ingredients. So I'm gonna first combine um, my flours. I'm gonna take my salt and I'm going to add my two teaspoons of salt. Okay, so my salt is added. So just make sure dry ingredients, make sure it's all incorporated. I can take it off the scale and just mix away. Okay, I put my bowl, my wet bowl in here and then I'm gonna zero out the scale. And then the magic, here is my starter. I use this like big ball mason jar to hold everything in. And it looks pretty nasty, but this is all normal. You can see it has a bubbling, which is good. You can want that bubbling. Um, this is since, I've had this since May, so it's been growing and developing. And basically what I do is I use it once per week and I take 90 to 100 grams out for this recipe. And then I feed it afterwards, um, which I'll show you in this video. Uh, and you know, that's really all I do. I don't need to feed it during the week because I keep it in the fridge, which is awesome. And I don't use, I don't waste any of it, which is the big thing too. Okay, uh, first things first, make sure this is all zeroed out. Then I'm going to add 385 minimum grams of water. Because I'm using wheat flour in here, I'm gonna do a little bit more than 400. Okay, and I have a lot of them. So around 405, perfect. Okay, now I'm gonna go in there to this wonderful starter that's all bubbly and weird and kind of a science experiment, um, but this is normal and this is good. Uh, you want this bubbliness and awesomeness in your starter when you're making it. Also, you'll notice that it has like that little bit of film. Well, if there's an excessive amount, like let's say there's a layer of this stuff on top, just pour it out in the sink. Don't worry about it. People freak out, it's not a big deal. That's just a part of the fermentation process. And what it's telling you is, feed me please. It needs more flour to feed on. Um, so here we go. I'm gonna take my fourth cup here. I mean, you can use whatever. 
and then I'm gonna get to our almost, almost um, 100 grams, and I should zero out my scale just to make sure. Okay, here we go. So usually what I would say is it's around like a cup, almost, almost a cup. So I'm gonna use, I mean, I'm a half a cup, I would say. Um, all right. So this is 97 right now, which is like a little bit more for good measure. And honestly, once you, it's exactly 100. Perfect. This might seem weird, but I saw this on a video somewhere and this is how I mix my starter every week. I use a chopstick. So uh, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna mix it and fully incorporate it into the water and make it this kind of milkiness. That's a good thing. So you can already see all of these awesome bubbles um, that's because this is a really, it's, it's naturally pretty vibrant. It has a lot of, uh, stuff going on in there because it's fermented. So all the bubbles and things are always good things. Um, and now comes the fun part. You're actually going to make dough. So this is what it looks like after I mixed it. Here's the flour that I made earlier. I've found, I know some recipes will tell you, use a wooden spoon. Wooden spoons, I've used them a lot in bread making. I feel like they get they get really uh, just, they clump on and that's fine. Um, but <laughs> I just, because I do this every single week, I use a silicone spatula. It's a lot easier to clean. So that's what I use. You can use a wooden spoon if you want. So here's the key part. Uh, you're not going to incorporate everything at once. Um, I just do a little bit and then I mix. And then I add more. This isn't getting there. I still have a little bit of water left. So I'm gonna add it and then I'll show you when it's done. It kind of requires two hands, so that's why I can't record the whole thing. But you're really just scraping down the sides, putting it all together, mixing it in. Um, and yeah, it's gonna start to resemble a dough. So this seems really wet and alien-like, and that's actually what the consistency you want. Uh, and what you're going to see is that I, I'm just gonna like continue kind of mixing it vigorously. I mix it for probably at least three to five minutes, really, just to make sure that it's all fully incorporated. I don't want any flour chunks in there. Um, the other thing that you can do, this is an option, but I found it's kind of unnecessary because my starter is pretty vibrant. So um, it's called stretches and folds. So after I've mixed this in vigorously, every I can set a timer for 15 minutes. And after 15 minutes are up, I can take like my really wet hands, which are really wet, and I just scrape down the sides, stretch it, and fold it. And what that does is that just builds up the gluten. Um, and so that's really important. Like let's say you have a new starter, it's really helpful sometimes to build that gluten um, if your starter isn't super vibrant. So that's just a key little tip if you want to do that. For me, it's optional at this point. Because I make this every week, I literally just make this into a consistent dough, really mix it vigorously, do a little bit of like stretching to it when I'm mixing it. Um, but otherwise, I, I don't do that. But you're welcome to do that. The first time I made this, kind of no ye though no need uh, starter dough. I did it for probably intervals of 15 minutes three times. Um, you're welcome to do that. It's not necessary. Okay, I wanna show you what it looks like after I've mixed it a decent amount. See how wet it is? It's really sticky. It sticks a lot. Um, but I also wanna show you, as, I, as you saw last time I was doing those stretch and folds, it kind of broke apart. That's because it, it, the gluten really hasn't been worked in yet, but you can already see, I mean, the consistency of it is already changing a lot. And that's even in the past five minutes of me just like mixing it more, um, which means that the gluten is starting to build um, and that's all good stuff. So we are now at the stage 
where I'm going to take my rubber spatula out, kind of scrape it off, put it in the dough, and then I'm gonna cover my dough with plastic wrap. You can use one of those silicone like bowl toppers to be more environmentally friendly um, and to make sure it doesn't have that crustiness on it. Because the key is um, we're going to just let it sit. Uh, and what, what I do is I usually leave it to sit on the counter or in the nice warm oven uh, with no, no temperature on, just sometimes the oven when it's, the door is closed, it's just a warmer space than your counter, especially in winter. And so it allows, um, it just anything warm will help it rise. And the key with this is you're going to see, the more you let it rise, the more it's going to build up in this bowl. Right now it's really low to the bowl. I would say it's not even covering a fourth of it. Um, and I'll show you after I've given, given this some rise time, how much it's risen um, and it will be rising. So we have now built the dough. This is the hardest part. It is done and that was super simple. All right, we're back. Um, so I have covered this with plastic wrap and this can literally just sit here. Um, that's kind of the best part is most of the work is happening when you're not doing anything. So this is gonna sit, it's gonna rise. I usually let it rise overnight. At least eight to 12 hours, I would say, um, is probably the time that you want. You can do more. Um, and I'll show you when I when this is done, what it means when it's done. It's called the finger test or the poke test. And that will tell you when it's ready to be made into a dough. So the next step that we're going to do is feeding our starter. This is my starter. I have new batch of warm water just because I <laughs> used it to show uh, <laughs> stretches and folds, but normally I just use the same water that I used before. Um, nice with mason jars is they have these little cups that you can see on the side. So I'm, I do half a cup, so I do half a cup to a half a cup of flour. Um, so both half a cup, you can play with it as you go. Um, I've just found that's helpful. Here we go. I'm gonna take half a cup of water and I'm just gonna use my mason jar measurements. It's not exact, but you just figure out how to play around with it. Okay. Okay, that's around a half a cup. Now, I have my big thing of flour, and I keep a half a cup measuring cup in here because uh, it's easier. So, there we go. Half a cup. That is what it looks like. Now key, I use my chopstick and I make sure that it's fully incorporated together. And then you're gonna start to see that it develops that consistency again of a typical dough. It doesn't have all that bubbliness because it was just fed. So now it's gonna feed on that stuff. Um, and what I do is I stick it in the fridge for the week because I found the fridge gives it a better, there's some scientific part of this, but the fridge makes it more sour. Um, so uh, that's also nice. And I love soury sourdough. Uh, the fridge also halts the you know fermentation process so it doesn't go crazy. When I first started the starter, I started it from scratch and I had a container and a few times it doubled over and got everywhere on my counters because it rose too much. Um, so that can be a thing that happens. Um, the fridge prevents that a little bit because it kind of slows down that fermentation process and doesn't make the starter as crazy. Um, so that is the process. And literally now um, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wait for my dough to rise. You can see that it's starting to like kind of, there's condensation at the top, which is great. That means it's hot, nice and warm in there. All right, so that is the process and then I'll follow up when I'm ready to 